15 seasons, 127 wins, 11 bowl appearances, 6 bowl victories, 1 Big 12 championship. By the end of the 2003 season, that's what Bill Snyder had accomplished at Kansas State. Kansas State fans were living the dream. It all seemed too good to be true, and many wondered how long it could last. As the saying goes, Father Time is undefeated. But Bill Snyder had one more trick up his sleeve before he called it quits, and the program would be forever changed. Two thousand four brought a lot of change for the Wildcats. James Terry was gone. Center Nick Leakey, who was a finalist for the Remington Trophy, was also gone, as was all Big Twelve guard Ryan Lilja. Most importantly, L. Roberson was no longer at quarterback. Nevertheless, they started two thousand four ranked thirteenth. But there was trouble right away as they struggled with one double A Western Kentucky. The next week they lost by twenty four to Fresno State. It was clear something was very wrong. After the game, Snyder commented, I've been here for 16 years. You can remember some of the 1-10 in 10 and 5-6 and seasons. We never had a football team that just got beat up as badly as we did today. It was the worst non-conference loss in 13 years, as they only amassed 180 total yards against the Bulldogs. Darren Sproles, the Wildcats' only returning star, eked out a mere 37 yards on 11 carries. Fresno State cornerback Richard Marshall said, we realized that if we stopped him, it would be no contest. We knew the only person they have is Sproles. And the rest of the teams on K-State's schedule used that same blueprint. Marshall was right. In 2004, the Wildcats weren't able to reload. There were no more lockets on the team. No sneaky good skill position players outside of Sproles. The line was depleted. With L. Roberson God, there was no one to replace him. Snyder used a mixture of Alan Webb and Dylan Meyer at QB. The prolific offense Snyder's teams had been known for disappeared practically overnight. Just as alarmingly, the defense also slipped. They had lost two All-Big 12 linebackers as well as the team leader in sacks. After the loss, Kansas State, who started the season ranked 13th, fell out of the polls entirely. They would finish the season 4-7, and seven, missing a bowl game for the first time since 1992. The season finale was a microcosm of the whole season. At the start of the fourth quarter, the Wildcats scored to go up 23-9. Due to a combination of defensive busts and offensive ineptitude, the Wildcats would lose the game 37-23. Sproles, the Heisman frontrunner coming into the season, went over 100 yards for only the fifth time that season against Iowa State, and the diminutive rusher with 5,000 career yards to his name wouldn't be back for 2005. In 2005, the Wildcats started the season unranked for only the second time since 1995. But last time they had a down year, 2001, the Wildcats surged back with an 11-win season in 2002. Unfortunately, history wouldn't repeat itself as K-State struggled almost as much in 05 as it had in 04. After going 3-0 against their paper-thin non-conference schedule, K-State went 2-6 in the Big 12, only beating Kansas and Missouri. They were once again plagued by inconsistent quarterback play. Jordy Nelson was a surprise star at wide receiver as a walk-on, but had no quarterback who could get him the ball. The defense continued to struggle, giving up 28 points per game. Before the season finale against Mizzou, Bill Snyder announced that this game would be his last. In many ways, the game was a quintessential Bill Snyder game. K-State came into the game as the obvious underdog, as Mizzou was still hoping for a spot in the conference title game. Kansas State took the lead on a blocked punt, but Brad Smith and his offensive weapons gave Missouri a two-touchdown lead in the third quarter. But the Tigers learned that you never count a Bill Snyder-coached team out. After a touchdown and a safety, the Wildcats took the lead on a pass to Jordy Nelson, a lead they would never relinquish. Braden Archer's pick six cemented what would seemingly be Bill Snyder's last game as head coach of the Wildcats. But you probably know there's more to the story. Snyder wasn't gone for good. His replacement was Virginia offensive coordinator Ron Prince. After a 7-6 and six campaign which included a berth in the inaugural Texas Bowl, Prince coached the Wildcats to back-to-back 5-7 -back and seven seasons, which was unacceptable. Bill Snyder had shifted the perception of Kansas State football. Whereas 7-6 and six and 5-7 and seven would once have let a Kansas State coach name his own salary on his next contract, in the post-Snyder era, it wasn't good enough. Not to mention that Prince went and combined 0-9 against Mizzou, Nebraska, and Kansas. 
After a couple middling years to start off Snyder's second tenure, the Wildcats began to pick up some steam. In 2011, the Wildcats had something cooking. They boasted talented defenders like Ty Zimmerman, Meshack Williams, and Arthur Brown. On offense, John Hubert and Colin Klein would carry the load. After years of game managers at best at quarterback, Snyder finally had a dude under center again. With Klein, the offense instantly became more dynamic. His running ability allowed Snyder to create new wrinkles in the QB run game. And even though he wouldn't wow anybody with his arm, he could sling the rock every now and then. K-State was starting to look like the K-State of old. Heck, they even had another locket on their team. After a narrow win at Miami, the Wildcats had to face a hyped-up Baylor team quarterbacked by soon-to-be Heisman winner Robert Griffin. It was an interesting Baylor team, one that had used part of the Kansas State model to move from Big 12 cellar dweller to annual contender by demolishing a cupcake non-conference schedule every year. The Wildcats were up to the task against the upstart Bears. When Baylor scored on their first drive, Colin Klein and company struck right back. From that point on, both fighters threw devastating punches. But when one would get knocked down, they'd pick themselves right off the mat and swing back. Late in the third, it looked like the tide had turned in the Bears' favor as the Wildcats had to punt down nine. Baylor had moved the ball into field goal range when an errant option pitch forced a long field goal that was missed. But K-State was still down by two scores. Klein, using a combination of his arms and legs, moved the Wildcats down the field and scored on a sneak to pull the Wildcats within two. On the next possession, Griffin, who had played nearly perfectly all season, made his first mistake of the year. Anthony Cantelli's field goal gave the Wildcats the lead, but there was plenty of time for Robert Griffin to work his magic. His hands either run or pass right here. Back down at the line! Jordan Volker knocked it down! And Kansas State is about to win it! The Power Cat proved too much to overcome. The next morning, the Wildcats found themselves in the top 25 for the first time in four years. KSU was back. The Wildcats improved to 4-0 in conference play before dropping games to OU and OSU and finished the regular season with a 10-2 record, but fell to a top-10 Arkansas team in the Cotton Bowl. In spite of the bowl loss, the Wildcats had established themselves as a contender. And the best news? All the key pieces returned for 2012. The first sign that the year might be special was a 52-13 destruction of Miami but their first real test came in the conference opener against six-ranked Oklahoma. The game was uncharacteristically slow for a Big 12 matchup, until the Wildcats' defense finally broke through, sacking Landry Jones and returning his fumble for a touchdown. A mishandled snap thwarted Oklahoma's goal line opportunity on the next drive. After the team's traded field goals, Oklahoma took the lead on a touchdown run by Blake Bell. After Ty Zimmerman intercepted Landry Jones, the Wildcats retook the lead on a keeper by Klein. John Hubert extended the lead on a nine-yard run. But the Sooners weren't done. Landry Jones drove them right down the field, and Sterling Shepard scored on a ten-yard catch. The Sooners failed the two-point try, and the deficit remained five. Oklahoma still had a chance, but Kansas State picked up a few first downs to salt away the win. It was a classic Wildcat victory. The team punched above its weight, playing scrappy and with nothing to lose. They took advantage of turnovers and they willed their way to their first top 10 win since 2007, and their first win in Norman since 1997. Kansas State was officially a contender. K-State won their next six games, including blowout wins over ranked West Virginia and Texas Tech teams. The Wildcats were ranked number two in the AP and number one in the BCS, and were 10-0 for only the second time in school history. Kansas State was inexplicably blown out by Baylor the next week. After defeating a ranked Texas team to finish the year, however, Kansas State stood at 11-1 and at the top of the Big 12 heap, conference champions once again. Though they technically shared the crown with Oklahoma, they got the Fiesta Bowl bid by virtue of their head-to-head -head victory over the Sooners, but were defeated by Marcus Mariota and Oregon 35-17. 2012 was the high watermark for Snyder's second stint as head coach. From 2013 to 2018, the Wildcats were good, but not great, averaging about eight wins a year. It amounted to them winning the games they were supposed to win and losing the games they were supposed to lose. Snyder's last game was at the end of the 2018 season, a matchup with 25th-ranked Iowa State, a solid team with a smattering of NFL talent. At 5-6, and six, the Wildcats were fighting for a bowl berth. 
The teams went back and forth before Kansas State got a break, forcing a fumble on a punt return and scoring on the ensuing possession to end the half. Iowa State wasn't done, however, scoring on their first possession of the third quarter. After a Kansas State field goal, the Wildcats picked off a Brock Purdy pass. Skylar Thompson and Alex Barnes led the Wildcats downfield for a touchdown. Another Purdy interception gave the Wildcats the ball at midfield. A pass to Isaiah Zuber made it 38-21, and it looked like the Cats had it made. They were running the ball well, Thompson was having one of his best games of the year, and they were taking advantage of mistakes before they started making mistakes of their own. A scoop and score following an Iowa State touchdown made the score 38-35 to in the blink of an eye. After the Cyclones forced a three and out, David Montgomery gave the Cyclones the lead with 434 left in the game. On fourth and game, Alex Barnes exploded through the line for a huge gain. The Wildcats quickly found themselves facing another fourth down. Skylar Thompson would have to make things happen. Cognizant of Skylar Thompson, mobile quarterback, he can escape with his legs. The Wildcats have to convert to Dalton Schoen, incomplete! But his pass was a hair too far. The loss knocked them out of a bowl game. Snyder would retire a week later. Missing a bowl game by losing the season finale to a team that hasn't beaten you in its last 10 tries isn't the way a coach wants to leave the game. But the fact that it was disappointing is a testament to how far the program had come. From 1983 to 1989, the Wildcats were 0-6-1 against Iowa State, who was a Big 8 bottom feeder. In those days, Kansas State was lucky to win four games in a single year, and there were serious talks about ending the program. Now here they were, lamenting a 5-7 and seven season. Bill Snyder was such an accomplished architect that he had taken the shack that was KSU football and rebuilt it as a mansion. The old ceiling was the new floor. KSU reached heights under Bill Snyder that nobody thought possible. By the end of 2018, Snyder was responsible for 40% of the wins in the entirety of Kansas State history. He was the only coach to win a conference title in the past 78 years. And though he never took his team to a national title game and only won two conference titles, there isn't a single coach that would say he doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. In 1991, the Wildcats only went 7-4. and four. But that year, Snyder was named the National Coach of the Year because the country knew that Snyder had already done the impossible. When he won it again in 1994, it prompted former Oklahoma head coach Barry Switzer who had plenty of experience destroying the Wildcats with his wishbone, to say, he's not just the coach of the year, he's the coach of the century. But Kansas State's story doesn't stop in 2018. It carries on. People regularly commend UCF's turnaround as impressive, and it was. They talk about Tulane's turnaround being incredible, and it is. And Colorado's turnaround under Bill McCartney deserves to be remembered as well. But Kansas State stands on another level. Unlike UCF and Tulane, KSU came from an even more impoverished standing in the college football world and rose to higher heights, winning a couple major conference championships. No team was in such disrepair and so devoid of hope as Kansas State. Not only was the program reshaped into a powerhouse and one of the toughest conferences to play in, but the program has proven it has staying power. Chris Kleiman has continued Kansas State's winning ways, even winning a Big 12 title game against an undefeated, playoff-bound TCU team laden with senior experience. All this underscores the fact that, even though he doesn't have the credentials other Hall of Fame coaches have, Snyder has earned the moniker Switzer gave him. Because he did something no other coach has ever done. Orchestrate the greatest turnaround in college football history.